Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem number five of the 2008 AP Calculus AB free response question. Uh, it deals with differential equations and limits. In this clip, we're going to be going over just parts B and C. Um, we are not doing part A because um, graphing slope fields is no, no longer uh, present in most of the AP Calc AB release questions. So we just want to focus on how to solve and then evaluate the limit of the um, particular solution. Before we get started, this is a strategy that we are going to use to solve the differential equation. First, we're going to separate the variables. We're going to integrate both sides using the appropriate integration rules. We use the initial condition to find C and resolve any sign ambiguities. And then lastly, substitute um, C back in and isolate Y, which will be the solution of our differential equation. Also, there are some rules um, that we'll be using um, to uh, solve this problem. So let's go over those real quick before we get started. So the first one um, is the rule for integrating rational expressions. So if you have the integral of 1 over ax plus b, the x, if you apply um, the u substitution technique and the integral of 1 over x, you will have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of ax plus b divided by a, the coefficient of x, plus your constant c. Okay, we'll be using this rule. Also, do not forget your power rule for integrals. The integral of x to the n dx is equal to uh, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Also, um, some properties of logarithm and exponents. If you have e to the natural logarithm of x, that simply becomes x because the e and the ln cancel out. In properties of exponents, if you have a to the x plus y, using the reverse of the product of powers um, property of exponents, this can be written as a to the x times a to the y. Okay, so we're going to be making use of all these um, when solving this differential equation. Okay, so let's get started. The B part, we have to find the particular solution, y equals f of x, basically we are isolating y, uh, of the differential equation, this differential equation right here with the initial condition, f of 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so we have dy dx equals y minus 1 over x squared. So what do we do first? Well, in our strategy here, we'll separate the variables. We'll have all the x's on the right and the y's on the left. To accomplish that, dx is a one term. We need to move it to the right. So we'll multiply both sides by dx. And then y minus 1, we need that on the left side. So we'll divide by y minus 1, y minus 1, and then y minus 1. So on the right side, the y minus 1's divide out, 1, 1. And then on the left side, the dx's divide out, 1, 1. So that leaves us with a separated um, differential equation, 1 over y minus 1 equals 1 over x squared dx. Okay, let's not forget the dy here. All right, now um, we're done separating variables. Next thing to do is to integrate both sides using the appropriate rules. Now this is easy to integrate using this rule right here, but this might be a problem. So can we rewrite this in such a way that we can determine an easy rule to use to evaluate the antiderivative? The answer is yes. So let's just bring down the left side, one, over y minus 1 dy and using the reciprocal property of exponents we can express this term as x to the negative 2 dx 
All right. Now we, we are now ready to integrate both sides. You integrate this side and this side. Using this rule right here, um, we can clearly see that A is 1. So the antiderivative is going to be the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals, now using the power rule here, we are going to have x to the negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, over negative 2 plus 1, negative 1, plus c. This c is a combination of the c's from both sides, okay? You just put it on the right side of the equation. Now, how do we get rid of ln? We use um, the exponential function. So we will now proceed to exponentiate both sides using e as the basis of our exponentiation, okay? So we have e to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y minus 1 equals e to the x to the negative 1 over uh, negative 1 can be written as negative 1 over x using the properties of exponents to reciprocate this. And then this just negates the whole value, this whole term. Okay, plus c. Now be careful here. Notice I am exponentiating the entire expression on the right. Okay? Don't leave the c down. That's inaccurate. On the left side, the e and the ln's cancel out. with inverse functions. So that leaves us with the absolute value of y minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 over x plus c. Now, absolute value can be written as the uh, plus or minus y minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 over x. And also, I can break this down the right side. Remember this rule here, this property of exponents? I can write this as e to the negative 1 over x times e to the c because whenever you multiply exponents of the same base, you simply add the powers. So we're simply using the reverse of um, the um, product property of exponents here. All right, now is the time to resolve the ambiguity uh, with this equation. So you have plus or minus here. Is it plus or is it minus this, the sign of y minus 1? So we're going to um, take a look at our initial condition. f of 2 is equal to 0. Let's write that here. Initial condition. Condition. Um, <clears throat> let's spell that correctly. Initial condition. Initial condition is that um, f of 2 is equal to 0. This is a point. So we have the point uh, 2 comma 0. So we can see that x is positive x is greater than 0, and y is equal to 0. This is a big problem here. If this had a sign, we'll just simply use the sign to determine what the, the sign to, to use here. But y is 0, 0 has no sign, it has no orientation, so we cannot really use the initial condition to determine the sign here. We have to make use of our number sense. Okay? Now take a look at these two functions on the right. What do we know about exponential functions. What is the um, range of exponential functions? We know that e to the x is always greater than zero. The exponential function never has a negative output, right? Let me just sketch the graph for you real quick. So the exponential function looks something like that. So these two values must be positive. So what happens when you multiply a positive number by a positive number. What's the sign of the product? It's positive, right? So that follows that this quantity here must be positive, okay? So we have y minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 over x times e to the c, okay? Now let's go ahead and find out what e to the c is. We'll just plug it back in here and that will be of the solution of our um, differential equation, okay? All right, so uh, to do that, we're going to plug in the values of x and y. x is 2, and um, 
y is 0, so we'll have 0 minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 half e to the c. Okay? Now, uh, we can, um, let's see what we can do here. We can, um, let's divide both sides by e to the 1 half. So divide by e to the negative 1 half, sorry. There are two ways we can do it. I was trying to think about the best way. Anyway, uh, that divides out. So we have um, <clears throat> uh, negative 1 on the left side. Negative 1 over e to the negative 1 half equals e to the c. Now we can use the reciprocal property of exponents to reciprocate this term here. So we, we're going to have negative e to the ne negative one uh, to the one half. Negative e to the one half is equal to e to the c. When you reciprocate it, the sign changes. Okay, so e to the c. Nice. So we know what um, e to the c is. What we're going to do is take this value and substitute it back into this equation right here, okay? And then we'll be able to isolate y with ease. So uh, you can think about this as a general solution. Well, not exactly general yet. We just have to add one. Okay, so we have um, y minus 1 equals e to the negative 1 over x times negative e to the one half. Okay? All right, so we're, we, we're going to have y minus 1 equals, now we're multiplying positive and negative, you have negative, e to the, um, you add the powers whenever you mul you're multiplying exponents with the same base. So we have negative 1 over x plus 1 over 2. Okay? And then you go ahead and um, add 1 to both sides. And I'll give you our, our particular solution. We have y equals negative e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half plus 1. Okay? Or you can write 1 minus this entire thing is, is the same thing. Um, so let me write that. That, look, that looks much pre prettier. So how about we write that as y equals 1 minus e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 over 2. So that goes our particular solution. Okay, let's advance to part C. So part C is dependent on part B. We are asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of the function, of the particular uh, solution, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and find out what the solution to that is, part C. Limit. As x approaches infinity, f of x is a limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus e to the negative 1 over x plus 1 half. So how do we evaluate this limit? We can simply evaluate this by substitution. Okay, So we're going to have 1 minus e to the negative 1 over Instead of x, you substitute infinity for x. 1 over infinity plus 1 half. So what do you, so you're going to have 1 minus e to the negative 1 over, negative 1 over infinity is just 0. So we are left with 1 half. And uh, there basically goes your final answer. And if you want to make it look pretty, you can express it as um, using the um, property of exponents, 1 minus the square root of e. Okay? So that's, that's your final answer. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. If you have any questions or things you'd like us to clarify, please include it in the comment section below and we'll address it as soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathcodeserve.com on the AP Calculus. Go ahead and visit that. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.